Hello and welcome to Bearded Reviews, where I'll be bringing you games you may not have heard of or want to know a little bit more about before you buy. Today we'll be taking a look at Vulcanoids, which is currently in early access. Vulcanoids is a first-person survival crafter where you'll find yourself approaching an island, specifically a volcanic island, even more specifically a very, very active volcanic island. It wasn't always this way though, once the island was a nice, idyllic, non-lava-soaked landscape where several villages of humans lived out their lives. That was until the Fire Nation... Sorry, wrong story. That wasn't until the Cogs attacked. We start the game off by arriving by submarine because submarines are cool. It won't however be your base for the game. The captain of said submarine will tell you to venture forth and gather a handful of resources so that you can instead acquire your own vessel of sorts. Heading out from the submarine, we're presented with the island. It looks peaceful and serene as you trot up the beach to gather the precious materials needed to fuel your excursion in the form of coal and copper. It should be noted here, you'll need a lot of coal. So much coal. Never-ending amounts of coal. Just when you think you've gathered enough coal, in later stages of the game, there's the potential that your drill ship will have used more coal than you've gathered while away from it, if you're not careful. Once you've gathered these resources, you'll have what you need to truly start the game and be able to acquire your own chariot of metal and fire as you behold a cog drill ship that you're going to steal from the enemy and call your own. This is a nice change for many of the survival crafters I've played. After you gather resources, try to find the perfect location for a base from which to venture, getting further and further away from home with each quest, transport being more of a mid-game unlock. Not so in Vulcanoids, who said, jog on to always having that lonesome walk back to your base and instead slapped wheels to it so you can take it with you on your adventures. Now while you may become fixated on collecting resources, it's crucial to note a very important detail. The timer up at the top of the screen that's ominously counting down. Hopefully you've been paying attention to the captain and his messages. If not, approaching the last couple of minutes, the ground will shake, the sirens will start to blare, as you start to look around to work out where you're being attacked from. The answer is the earth. It's the ground. The island itself is attacking you. It's not even that the world wants to kill you. You're simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. As mentioned, the island is volcanically active, and that means eruptions. More importantly, pyroclastic flows which pro tip you don't want to get caught by, nor do you want your drill ship to be caught either. As despite looking like a hearty metal behemoth designed for such environments, it will not do well. I can attest to this by having mistimed one of my returns to my ship too late by mere seconds and losing two thirds of it as it was caught in the middle of drilling into the safe, safe dirt. As another side note, I feel the drill ship may be better served by being built out of whatever the buildings and trees are made of, as they seem to survive quite well throughout the game. Which upon further inspection is wood. Who would have known that, yes, immortal, immovable, indomitable wood. I should have made my cog ship out of that to survive the superheated rock and fire? Hiding in your drill ship, safely underground, you can hear the eruption occurring above. You can even watch it if you like through the periscope, which, in a, another thought, maybe I should have made the drill ship out of whatever the periscope was. I digress. When underground, your drill ship is limited in what it can do. Some functions of the ship will still work, like basic crafting and research, but for the most part, it's a brief respite of about 30 seconds where you can take stock of what you've done, stock up on ammo, and decide where you're going next. I do like the visuals, especially the drill ships. Everything you see about them is designed in such a way you can tell what it's for and what it does. From the different tech levels for the giant drill on the front to the ever vigilant turrets, even down to the extra storage. This means you can eyeball an enemy drill ship and have a good idea where to attack it from, where the turret blind spots are and where the enemy cogs will be coming out of. The environment is nice to look at, and the buildings in the submarine are very clearly human, and the drill ship separate and made by the cogs. The environment, however, over an extended playthrough, isn't immersive. While I do like how it all looks, and when you see the devastation after your first eruption, it makes you go, wow, the eruption has trashed everything. The trees stripped to ash-covered trunks, and you can barely see 10 meters in front of you. But after a few minutes, everything clears, 
the trees come back into bloom and you can see far enough to know the buildings are unaffected by the eruption that would decimate your drill ship if caught in it. I think I can understand why the devs chose this, an entire game wandering around ash-covered stumps and rubble villages would look very boring, but it does make you very aware it isn't a living world and you're just in a cycle on a timer meant to replenish resources. How would I tackle this? I'd probably change the buildings to at least look more damaged from eruptions. Right now they look just like everyone's locked up for lunch and gone for a stroll, possibly a weather mechanic like rain to explain why the ash disappears. As I said, I do like how the game looks, just that the visuals don't match up with the story that you're in. As to the pace of the game, if you strictly follow the quests, it's not breakneck speed, but it is quite fast paced. When I first played, I had the quests, but I also tried to explore myself a bit, which extended the playtime noticeably. On a second playthrough, to get the footage for this video, I stuck to the quests and found myself progressing a lot faster. While I've not snagged the achievement for completing the game in under 7 hours, I can certainly see how that will be doable once you know what you're doing. The learning curve of the game... Initially I got very frustrated with this game. Having played a lot of the genre, I felt I should be able to jump straight in. Some of the early quests, which are essentially the tutorial, I feel could be worded slightly better. One example of this would be when placing objects in your drill ship. You have several quests producing various objects, upgrading the drill ship, telling you where to place them. I got confused because I had no space left in the walls where it wanted me to place this particular object. Only for someone in my stream chat to point out that you could put that particular object in the roof. Now the quest specifically stated the walls, which may seem a pedantic critique, but you do have a lot of objects that actually can't be placed there. So. With the quest suggesting it had to be the walls, I didn't consider the roof as an option. So a small detail, but wording of tutorials is important, and I think it could be better in this game. Controls with multiple functions. I do like games to be pick up and play, not going through settings before a playthrough. As an example, the buttons to interact with objects also overlap with the button to pick everything up out of a container and also the trigger for your weapon. This meant that I often found myself shooting containers by mistake when I forgot to holster the weapon, or when in the container I would exit only to realise that I'd picked everything up out of it and then had to waste time going back into the container to unload everything again. So as to the learning curve, it's not unplayable by any means, but many little details just made me feel silly and frustrated. Despite my early frustrations with the game, I actually got quite into it by the end. There isn't a lot of depth to the game yet. It is a lot of raid drill ship, acquire tech, upgrade your drill ship, repeat at a higher level. But that in itself can be fun. We don't always need a super engaging storyline. There is fun in acquiring loot for the loot god and just wandering the world making your drill ship look exactly how you want with a lot of customization options available. I can't currently comment on multiplayer, but I can see how that would add a whole new element of fun to the game as well. Overall, while I doubt I'd want to keep rerunning the story in its current form, I do think that this game has got enough to make you play it more than once. Solo campaign, multiplayer, achievement hunting, different difficulty levels including custom difficulty, devs who are actively updating the game, finished off nicely with what appears to be a growing modding community. Replayability is definitely there. I've already dropped about 38 hours into the game, so I don't see any problems with you getting your money's worth. I'll definitely come back to this game once more updates have come out, as well as probably dabbling with multiplayer and mods too. If you like survival crafters, I would say at a minimum, chuck this on your Steam wishlist. But at around £15 currently, the only barrier I could see that would make you feel like you're not getting your money's worth is if you got so frustrated with the early game problems that you ended up not playing through further. Vulcanoids is available on Steam, brought to you by the developer and publisher, Vulcanoid. I've been Bearded Squire, and for more game reviews, please drop a like and subscribe, and to be extra awesome, please drop a comment on what you think of the game, what you think I've missed from this video, or games you'd like me to review in the future. Thanks for watching, and whatever you choose to do with the rest of your day, I hope you have a fantastic time. And until I next see you, until then, Goodbye.